Good morning, me again. So tell me, how are you feeling today? Well, I don't really like the way that I look, and when I look in the mirror, I get sad. Okay, perfect. And how's your mental state? Really sad. No, wait, really annoyed. How many cups of water are you drinking a day? What's water? And you ever feel like an ugly duckling? Only on the weekends. Well, do I have the perfect show for you? I thought you were a doctor. And our show today is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to jumpstart your creativity this year. Valentine's Day is coming up, and it's a perfect time to learn how to make a handmade gift, cook a delicious meal, or try something new for yourself. As you know, I've been watching so many unhinged TV shows for YouTube content that I've forgotten how to be a productive member of society. One of my favorite things about Skillshare is that I can revisit classes anytime I want since they're always here. Real Productivity, Create Your Ideal Week by Michael Carnton Apricorn is one class that I always like to look back on when I'm feeling useless. It's a quick 22 minute lesson on how to maximize productivity, craft an ideal work week, and build short-term systems for long-term success. I like using this class to help reset my week and get into a productive workflow after watching 20 TV shows in three days. Plus, the interface is super easy to use, and you can pick up or pause a class whenever you want. You still get that sense of community with fellow creatives in an engaging environment. And if you want to unlock more skills in your brain, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. The Swan is an American reality television show broadcasted on Fox in 2004. Of course it was in the early 2000s, where television hosts could traumatize their guests, and it's just another casual Monday. What's the matter? There's no one olives! What? There's no one olives near me! There are no olives here! There are no olives here! <laughs> Bring out the olives! No! No! They're just olives. Now Kalamata olives, those are dangerous. The show involves a group of women that are deemed ugly, and they're given very extreme makeovers using plastic surgery. A team of coaches, therapists, trainers, cosmetic surgeons, and dentists would all work together to yassify these homely girls into beautiful swans. I'm just reading the summary, okay? Each week, two women were featured, and at the end of the episode, one went home while the other was selected to compete in the swan pageant for a chance to be deemed the Swan. So basically, if you took plastic surgery, a pageant, and a game show, and for some reason, added elements from Hunger Games, not gonna lie, I'm kind of intrigued. I hope Katniss finally gets to eat pita bread. Or whatever. Why is his name so weird? Back in the day, this show was very controversial, if you couldn't already tell. Hurtful and repellent, even by reality's constantly plummeting standards. The Swan's transparent message is that once these women have been surgically corrected to resemble mainstream celebrity beauty, their problems will be solved. The most sadistic reality series of the decade. Really? This show is? I would have to agree, but have you seen Mori traumatize someone with cotton balls? I can't see them, I can't touch them, I can't hear them. I just, I just, they make a noise. Oh my. Where did you go? Well, that explains why when you look up sadistic in the dictionary, you see this face. The Swan aired at a time when plastic surgery was still pretty stigmatized in North America, which wasn't even that long ago if you think about it. Only people with self-esteem issues get plastic surgery, or people only get work done to impress other people. And that is a sin. But according to some philosophers, so is laughter. So I know that if I'm out with someone, like, I know they're like laughing like this. <laughs> it's not cute, bitch. But now with the rise of social media, TikTok, and glow up culture, we're all in our girl boss Yassify era, where we push the idea of doing whatever makes you happy. I think it's called gaslight, gatekeep, and Botox. And this mindset does come with its own set of problems. But for now, let's take a look at the swan and why the show got such a bad rep. It all began with a nationwide search for over 200,000 hopefuls, each looking to fulfill their fantasies of going from ugly ducklings. People just don't understand what it feels like to feel ugly. I'm afraid that nobody else would ever love me. These 16 women handed over their lives to a world-class team of experts, including radical plastic surgery, cosmetic dentistry. One of the most challenging cases. Intense therapy. That hurt me so bad. You're never going to allow it again. Oh my god. I pray 
for whoever decorated that therapist's office. There's just too many squares. It's the least popular shape. And they did all of this without seeing themselves in a mirror. No mirrors, no mirrors, no mirrors. Until their final reveal. Did they just say no mirror? The amount of trust you have to have. Wow, that's more trust than I have when I blindly sign terms and conditions on websites. Hey, when I wake up with my one kidney still intact, then I know I'm safe. I'm not really sure where my other one went. Each week, two contestants will be transformed, God. but only one will be judged beautiful enough to move on to the pageant. I am going to be a new person. Well, if you don't win, at least you get free work done. Uh, how, how much could that be? Like 4000 plus tax? Collectively, they received more than $4 million worth of treatments. My bad. Turns out one rhinoplasty is already $5,000. Well, so far, I feel like that's a pretty good deal. They're probably paying for it with their mental health. Sacrifice. I would hate to see all the work you've done and then butter makes you lose the pageant. And paid. I feel worse than I expected and I need to lay down before I punch somebody in the face. Butter does have a pretty bad track record for ruining people's lives. I think it killed my family one time. Grueling physical training. <laughs> and hardcore personal coaching. No pork chops. The party's over. The program pushed all of the competitors to their absolute limits. I prayed for death this week. So this is just the first minute, and I am already invested. Who's getting punched? Will they ever change that awful room decor? Who's gonna stop Butter from committing more crimes? The first contestant we're looking at is Marsha Metalberg. Team, Marsha came to us claiming that she wanted to be invisible. Dr. Dubrow, what was your plan to bring out her beauty? I think Marsha felt invisible because she really couldn't get a good feel for her features. So the idea was to make her more distinctive. Just really bring out her inner beauty. Well, we'll witness the results in just a moment, but first let's flash back to the Marsha we met three months ago. Wasn't outer beauty the most important thing? Ain't that the point of this whole show? Isn't that why you're putting these people through literal hell so they can fit into society's beauty standards? Dr. Terry, I don't think riddles are your strong suit. I just don't want people to notice me. I don't want people to see me. I'd give anything to not want to be invisible. What? Marsha? I can see you just fine. And I'm legally blind. I've got hair. I feel completely unbearably disgusted with myself. It makes me feel really unfeminine to have to shave my face every single day. Why do they make it seem like shaving is a bad thing? Marsha, there's nothing wrong with that. If you got a hairy face, you got a hairy face. I can give you some good recommendations for razors if you want. I can't wait to see her. Here she is, the brand new Marsha Metalberg. of this world. Come with me, let's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here's the result. And she does look good, but was plastic surgery needed to achieve this result? They kind of did her dirty in that before photo. I can still see her face in her new face, which to me is good, because plastic surgery is supposed to enhance her natural features. But I feel like if she got a haircut, put on some makeup, took off her glasses, she could probably do this to some degree. She looks like she doesn't even know where she is in the before photo. These shows are very well known to exploit people's vulnerabilities. Kelly's competitor this evening is Rachel Love Fraser, a 27-year-old construction company clerk from Sammamish, Washington. I have a horrible profile. I would like my nose to be fixed, and I want to take care of all my chunks. I feel average because I look at myself in the mirror, and that's what I see. I believe that has had an impact on my relationship with my husband. She's a little average, but... Average? Average ain't a bad thing. Why are they making these normal things seem so bad? Oh, it's nothing. I think the producers are just awful. Hey, if someone said my hairline is average, I would be happy. My relationship with my dad is complicated. I was in the third grade. He said, I told your teacher just not to expect too much out of Rachel. Well, yeah, they're in the third grade. What do you expect? Them to pay taxes? Actually, that would have been a nice heads up. No one told me I had to pay bills when I got older. If I knew that, I would have become one of those van YouTubers. I would best describe my daughter as uh, a female copy of me. Oh I've uh, always felt insecure all my life. Why would her dad tell her that? 
Doesn't seem very Rachel Love Frazier to me. I might be wrong here, but can doctors confirm in the comments? If you're a dad, I'm pretty sure that saying, Bestie, we're twinsies, is probably not the best thing to say to your daughter. Especially if you look like Orville Redenbacher. Does he hate her? Like, <laughs> Did Rachel crash his car and step on his toes when she was a baby? Because I do hate when babies do that. But her dad has had it out for her since the third grade. Same with her husband. I think Rachel needs plastic surgery on her relationship with these weirdos. Correct me if I'm wrong, the men in her life don't seem to be so supportive of her. Is that where it stems from? She's carrying all that inadequacy that her father feels into her own life. That would be something we need to explore in therapy. Well, yeah, because you got people implying that she looks bad. Maybe don't call her average looking every single day and say that she looks like a warped version of President Snow from Hunger Games? I think that might help. What do you want to do with that nose, Randall? Well, I think the biggest problem with her is that she's got such long nostrils seen from the side, you can almost see into her nose, and I have to correct that. The hardest part of your nose, though, is that your long nostrils. We're going to improve the whole thing. Okay, we're doing the nose now. The hardest part will be her nose, because she has certain anatomical areas that are difficult to absolutely correct. I can make improvements, but there are no guarantees when it comes to plastic surgery. I'm actually really intrigued on how they're going to change her nose. Nowadays, I feel like it's a little bit harder to say if this is bad or good. You really can't deny that once you fit into society's beauty standards, your life will drastically improve. I've given her an alluring, more tantalizing face. In a couple weeks, it'll be all worth it. Why do you say the word tantalizing and then show her like this? I think the hardest part of my recovery is that I have to go through it alone. I hate this mic no matter what. You lie, I know you're there. I've asked him to please keep his phone with them because you never know when you might get a call from me. You better answer today. She's getting like 20 procedures done and her husband isn't even there. Honey, just gonna go get my face chopped up. Might make it back, might not. Don't wait up. Like, what have you been doing all this week? Working? Yep. You tired? Mm, a little bit. I'm not liking this conversation. He didn't even ask how her tantalizing face feels. Well, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe Mike is too busy combing his hair to pick up the phone. I need a little bit more from you right now, okay? Work, you mean I come home, when I go back to work, when I come home, when I go back to work, when I come home. I'm gonna let you go, okay? Bye. 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 But Rachel persevered, and within weeks she went from average to awesome. What a weird choice of a word. I don't think this is a Twitch stream. She went from average Joe to awesome sass. My braless wife brought me a sandwich. That is a good looking nose. I really don't understand how they do that. Like, where does the rest of it go? Do they put it in her cheeks for filler? Did they put it in a takeout box for later? I have so many questions. How awkward would it be if she hated it? You definitely can't get a refund for this, but you could get a lawyer. <laughs> oh, that's how I laugh when my boss tells a joke and I want vacation time. For a plastic surgery show, the transformations aren't as crazy as I thought. Even though Rachel got a lot of work done, Rachel's swan plan will include a nose job, lip enhancement, a chin implant, brow lift, liposuction, and several visits to the dermatologist. For her body, she'll have a breast lift and liposuction in five different areas. At the dentist, Rachel will have zoom bleaching, a full set of Da Vinci veneers, and cleaning. So I'm pretty desensitized to how extreme people's features can look because of social media. Her plastic surgery doesn't seem that insane in my eyes. I feel like the surgeons did a pretty good job. Yeah, the thing about these shows, they make the before photo so bad that anything after will automatically look better. I don't know, maybe I was expecting something more like botched, where things just get taken to the next extreme, but everyone looks really good and still like themselves. This is 
the early 2000s version of a glow up. The only time that you would see something like this is on television or in mainstream media. But now glow ups happen in the span of 15 to 30 second TikToks. And we still like watching before and afters that are very extreme. Just look at all these YouTube compilations. I know, I find them really cool to look at. Cause it's like, wow, these people could come up with a new identity to avoid climate change. And the greater the contrast, the more likes and validation you get. I also wonder sometimes, are glow ups offensive? Not purposefully, but by accident. Cause the before is always painted as, oh, ew, I don't like that. Can I get a refund or a store credit? And the afters are, this is what you need to look like if you want to be happy with your H&M store credit. And the average person probably looks more like the before photos than the after. Globes are a product that you can buy now, cause that's capitalism, baby. Hey, average is good. The majority of people in the world are average. She's a little average. Let's take a look at one more contestant from this one. I am 35 years old. I feel like I'm at least 60. The way I feel, you can kind of tell by the way I look. I am just so tired and drained. I met the father of my kids, and I felt that I finally met a nice guy. But he didn't want to live with the kids in me. He really didn't want the responsibility. I would love to look sexy and glamorous, just to feel like I'm alive again. So it looks like Marnie is looking for her post-breakup glow up. Usually girls just cut their hair, maybe get a dog, but I guess this is fine. Marnie has a tired look, and I'm just gonna take out the fat pockets, and I want to try to get rid of that sad appearance. Marnie is sad though. What if she's at a funeral, and she can't look sad? She does not have much shape to her calves. What I'm wanting to do is to taper her calves so there's a little bit more feminine look. Oh wow, they really show everything. Only two days after difficult surgery, Marnie is already having problems sticking to the program. Marnie, your chin strap's off? Yeah. When was the last time you took that? Before that? Yeah. I wore it for an hour yesterday and I just ate That's not good. Marnie's given about 25% to the gym and left on her own, I don't think she'd ever break a sweat. So it looks like I'm gonna have to hold her hand and make it work. Is this healthy? Marty just had her whole face and body obliterated, and now this scary guy is yelling at her to work out. I'm scared that her chin might actually fall off. When Marnie entered the program, she was depressed and hadn't dated in 10 years. She had trouble following doctor's orders and fought to find the motivation to stay in the program. She stands here today a stunning beauty. Hey, she looks good. I was kind of nervous that she wasn't going to have a nose or, or a chin because she started exercising right after she rolled out of her hospital bed. Well, what do you guys think about the show? To me, there's always so much gray area with cosmetic procedures. Look at how happy these people are after getting their makeovers. It is television though, and the storyline is everyone is happy after getting procedures done. But some of the contestants went on to better things like getting modeling jobs, interviews on magazines, and clout. When I walk down the street now, I'm completely confident. Hi. The fact that I lost 35 pounds to me is, is a major accomplishment. Does her husband still think she's average? average. I definitely received uh, a lot of ribbing for calling my wife average. People make mistakes and I definitely made a big one there. I think that there should be more regulations with plastic surgery because it's very easy to go overboard and regret something that you can't reverse. And maybe therapy should be included for free. Okay, well maybe not for free because therapists do need to eat their salads. For some people, plastic surgery is just a surface level fix for something else going on in their life. And talking about it might help you realize that, hey, maybe I don't need a rhinoplasty liposuction combo with Sprite. And vice versa, if getting that value menu BBL makes you happy and improves the quality of your life, then who's to say you can't do it? If you want BBLs to stay on the value menu, feed the YouTube algorithm a like and a comment, so I can also stay on your recommended. And so I can also grow back my kidneys. Any more unhinged TV shows that you would recommend? Please let me know, cause I actually can't stop. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.